Alaikum. Peace be unto you. How are you, Shaykh? How are you, brother? Good, good. Thank God. Thank God. Everything is good. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah, the Creator, is most kind and most merciful, and He's hooked us up. So glad to have met you. Absolutely. And I'm glad you're here on the Deen Show. Women. Yes. In Islam. And the people want to know, is the woman in Islam subjugated? Is she oppressed? Or is she truly liberated? What do you got to say? Uh, I would say that Islam in the middle of 7th century, by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had protected, honored, gave rights to women that today in the West, in any country that you would choose, women do not have similar rights like the Muslim woman had in the middle of 7th century. Now someone says, come on now, this is fairy tale stuff. You know, we see these women, they're behind the veil, you know, our women over here, they can wear what they want, bikini top in the middle of the street, your women are over here, you got them in these loose fitting clothes with the veil on top. What is this? We living back uh, four or five hundred years ago. What kind of uh, freedom is this? Islam honored the woman and the creator of a woman, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had honored the women so much that their value as human beings is up to their own character, up to their own manners. And manners is what we call in Islam religion. Religion is your noble manners. So let's say for marriage, for example, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that a woman is pursued for marriage for four reasons. Her money, her beauty, her social status, and her manners, that's her deen. Think about it from a woman's standpoint. You can be born very beautiful or not. You can be born into money or not. You can be born to a family with high social status or the lowest social status. You have absolutely no control of that. What is the only element that you're in control of? your character, your deen, your manners, and that's the measuring stick in Islam. Islam, when the woman is covered, only her face and her hand is being made as a human being with value, not an object for desire, not in a materialistic way, but a human being that her characters and her stance and her education and her courtesy is what matters. If you look at Virgin Mary in most of the pictures that our Christian brothers have, even though it's forbidden Islam to have, uh, uh, to depict uh, any holy messenger or character by picture. But if you look at the picture, whatever that dress, the Virgin Mary you see in all the pictures, that is the Muslim woman dress code. Yeah, why? If you don't got nothing against that, then why is it bothering you that this woman, instead of wearing less, she wants to wear more? Absolutely. And then you get people that actually object to that. At the same time, people pierce their skins, mutilate their bodies with tattoos and piercing and dyeing their hair different colors and doing all horrible things that actually if it was a disease they would be running the doctor to cure the skins from and that's freedom of style or fashion and so on and so forth for a woman naturally to protect her honor and beauty and, 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 and self to the one who would be deserving of it that's the husband then that's a problem obviously convoluted logic at the same time, the honor that Islam gave to the woman, a woman not to be touched unless to a man that is deserving of her, that a man that would give her the title of a wife, not a sexual partner or a, a whatever title, mistress or girlfriend that they have. A man would be responsible for her own children, not she would be a single mom or like nowadays the most abhorrent thing that you see, well let's think about the common baby, put him up for adoption. You see organizations that actually uh, 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 target the uh, devastation of datings with, with legitimate children and actually there's a, an organization in New Jersey and, and, and it made me cry to hear the commercial that actually uh, if you have a baby, no questions asked, bring it to us, do not kill it, do not throw it in the garbage to die in the cold, give us the baby and we're not going to ask you any questions. That is not a result of Islam, that is a result of being against Islam and not following the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now tell us, let's go back in time a little bit. Yes. Because we believe as Muslims, ones who have submitted consciously to the one God, the creator of all that exists, that he created us in original goodness. So if we look back to what some other ways of life, wasn't it that now some other ways of life, they were debating if the woman had a soul, that she is the the outcome. Original sin and, and all that, these kind yeah, of yeah. concepts. What, what do we got to say about that? Uh, for example, and, and this is not in the true teachings of Prophet Muhammad it's whether made intentionally or through a mistranslation uh, in one of the early scribes of Christianity. They claim that it was Eve that deceived Adam into disobeying God and listening to the devil and by that all humanity after they were supposed to be living in paradise, now we have to suffer here on earth. 
So the first sin, the original sin, was committed by Eve, allowing Adam to be deceived. You look at the Quran, and this is one of the liberations, the liberation moments of women in Islam. It is the shaitan who deceived them both into disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and out of paradise. Uh, till the dark ages, there were probably three to four million women that were burned at the stake. Why? Their bodies for reproduction, uh, you know, they're sinful, they're dirty, and, and all these kinds of things. That's not what Islam is teaching. That's not what any prophet of God is teaching. That's not no. the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. That, that's not the teachings of anyone. And, and for that, if a woman cooks well or she does something out of the normal, somebody's jealous, the easiest thing is just to burn them at the stake. And That's the what they fact, were doing historically. Absolutely. And the matter of fact, there's a tremendous knowledge, the herbal knowledge of the women of the middle centuries on the dark ages that would have benefited humanity tremendously. And that herbal knowledge was burned to ashes with the women that carried it and they were burned at the stake. That was not Islam. That was not even true teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him. That's the people that actually went against women and went against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we see that Islam is truly liberating the woman because Islam, God Almighty, He doesn't blame the woman for this no. first sin, does He? Absolutely not. What does Islam teach? Islam teach that a man and a woman get exactly the same reward. And many verses in the Quran, uh, you know, the people who are patient, the people who are righteous, the people who are praying, the people who are giving charity, men or women, men or women, after each description, will get tremendous reward from God when they do that. A woman gets exactly the same reward like a man, and a woman is a major part of society, and you know, look at another honor that you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon women. Who is the greatest woman of Islam ever? Virgin Mary. Mm -hmm. The only holy scripture that has Virgin Mary's name on it is in the Quran. This Maryam. is Jesus' mother. Yes. There's a whole chapter named after her in the a Quran. Absolutely. Word of God, the My Quran. own daughter's name is Maryam. Yeah. She's nothing like her, but at least we got the good name. Yes. But subhanAllah, that's, that's an honor bestowed upon yeah. Virgin Mary, the greatest woman that ever lived and will ever live. Mine too. That's amazing. Absolutely. So, yeah. so you know, that honor there, uh, I'll give you another example. Which, you know, in America today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had blessed me with four daughters. I can decide, you know what? I want to give my money, like, let's say, Leona Helmsley, the owner of huge real estate in New York, yeah. give her money to dogs, not to her grandchildren or children. In Islam, that's totally forbidden. She has a guaranteed right of inheritance. And the woman in Islam inherits her father, brother, husband, son. Even if she's a, gra a, a, a grandmother, she has the right. If her son or daughter passed away, she would have the right to inherit her grandchildren if they passed away again. She inherits from everyone. But only her money is for her. Every male around her responsible financially for her, she shares their money and she can inherit them. Let's take a break. This is amazing. Some amazing facts. You're learning so much. Sit tight to learn more. Jihad, often mistranslated as holy war. The word jihad means to struggle. Islam does not preach violence. It does not preach vicious holy war. It certainly does not condone terror and suicide bombing. Islam preaches compassion, tolerance, and justice. Find the truth about Islam. Call toll-free 877-WHY-ISLAM or visit whyislam.org. Order your free copy of the Quran today. Back here on The Dean Show with the author of The Lies About Muhammad, Imam Mustafa Zaid. And those are some more lies that people try to deceive people with. Some people unintentionally, they just don't know. They just blindly follow him what some other ignorant people might be saying, but now those sincere, open-minded, humble-hearted people are coming to us to learn. So they're learning that Islam does not oppress the woman, but actually uplifts her, doesn't it? Absolutely. Tell us, you mentioned that she has a right to inherit, which she didn't have before. Yes. No. They were burning women. They were discussing if women had a soul. These were the other religions. Yes. But Islam said that, as you said earlier, that Islam doesn't blame the woman for that first sin committed. This is original sin. Original sin. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. Them. Yeah. Okay, so we got that right to inherit, right to bear her own name. Wasn't this something that now the husband would put his last name on the woman because this was like his property? Why go far? At the turn of the 20th century, exactly till 1882 in England, the beacon of our Western democracy. A woman could not stand up in court. She was not considered a legal entity. 
and she could not own property. It has to be in the name of her brother, father, or husband. She was not a legal entity until 1882. To 1882. 1882. We're about to get into the 20th century. And that was in England. Elizabeth Blackwell, the first physical, uh, you know, uh, female physician in England and in Europe for that matter. The most opposition that she got and resentment she got from other females. How could you want to be in a profession that is supposed to be? be a professional of males. Not only that they treated women that horribly, but the females themselves were so brainwashed that they did not owe, even know their own worth. And they opposed her. Look at Islam, mandated education for women at the middle of 7th century. Mandated it. They had businesses, they had ownership, they have the right to speak even. Women went to Prophet Muhammad like almost the leaders of opposition party. Uh, uh, Nusayba bin Taqab al-Ansari uh, was famous by Umm Umar and she literally saved the life of the Prophet in one of the battles. One man wanted to hit him with a dagger in the battle of Uhud. She threw herself on him and she received a stab in her own shoulder saving the Prophet's wife. She came to Prophet Muhammad and said, O Prophet of Allah, all the verses that are re you know, revealed from the Quran so far are talking about men or talking to men. And I, do, I don't see anything for women. And because of that, that was the occasion in Surah Al-Ahzab, the famous verse that, you know, the believing women and the believing men and the righteous women and righteous men and, and the praying women and praying men all going to get equal rights. And, you know, these are the rights that Islam gave. Uh, uh, out of the, you know, uh, 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 the first pledges that the Muslim gave, women gave pledges to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And even, in, you know, scholars would tell you in the science of uh, narrating the hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, women narrators of the hadith and the leading one with Aisha, the, the, the Prophet's wife, are more truthful than the average man. And they're praised for that. Yeah. It's a ilm called ulama al jarhi wa ta'deel. So the honor of their, and at the same time, look at how mothers are respected in Islam. A man came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, O oh, Prophet, who is most deserving of my companionship? He said, Your mother. He said, All right, we know that. Then who? He said, Your mother. He said, oh, right, Prophet. Who, then who? He said, your mother. The man, out of desperation, obviously, said, then who? He said, your, your father. So, so the, the, the Look at their yes. So, uh, there Amazing. are our mothers. And the best thing that a Muslim can do is to pray to God on time. The second thing is to do well by parents. Yeah. And in the parents, the mother is sacred. The mother is a woman. Yeah. And if you go to, throughout the Muslim world and see how mothers are treated, Subhanallah, it's, it's, it's amazing. And so when people to come to say that they're subjugated or that, you know, you couldn't be further from the truth. So in Islam, the, the mother gets the gold, she gets the silver and the bronze and the uh, father gets the consolation. The father gets, gets the reward of being around. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. So l let's be fair because somebody might have heard and said, you know what, how is this when the witnessing of a woman is one, two to one? That's a very good point. Or the inheritance that yes. is only half that of a man, etc., etc. These are very two points. Let's take one after the other. The first one about the witnessing. What people do not understand is that witnessing varies depending on the situation. For example, the verse of the Quran 282 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that bring two men as witnesses, and if you, the, you have only one man, then replace that missing man by two women. That's a business transaction. That's for recording debts. And the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning made it two men witnesses, not one man witness, not because one man is a half a witness, is for one man to remind the other. So when you replace that man with two women, why did you replace him with one woman? Because you wanted the two women independently remind each other without having to interact with a man that might be foreign to them. And that is one special situation. For example, you go to a very... Uh, 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 important and significant event, which is a husband accusing his wife of cheating or vice versa. A woman's testimony is exactly the same testimony as a man. She would testify four times that he's cheating, or he would testify four times that she's cheating, and her testimony is equal to the same. In crimes of murder, if one woman is there and she is credible, like she did not, is not known to be lying or you have mental capacity issues, her testimony is enough to convict, you know, 10 men. So it varies. So they go to these exceptions and they make it the general rule. That is not true. When it comes to inheritance, actually women get a more than fair share of inheritance. For example, the rule in Islam, who would inherit what, is, has nothing to do with the gender. 
The number one rule is the position of the generation. Is it a young generation that needs more money to overcome the obstacles of life or it's an old generation that lived their life already? Meaning, I have a mother and I have a daughter and I pass away. Yes, my daughter would get half of the inheritance that my son would have. And I'll tell you the reason later. But my daughter gets more money than my own mother. Even though my relationship with my mother is stronger than my daughter. I could marry so many times and I have 50 daughters. But I have only one mother. My mother gets less than my daughter. And they're both females. Why? Because my daughter is uh, of the regeneration. That is a generation that is about to receive life, life so she gets more inheritance. The second thing is who is responsible for whom? It's not because she's a woman or he's a man. The reason is... In Islamic law, the father is responsible for the daughter. Then if he passes away, her brother. Then if, if she's married, then it is the father. Then if he passes away, it's the son. They all responsible for her and she inherits them all. Her inheritance, her own money, is only for her. If she likes, she can give to them. If not, it's, their, it's only their money and they still be responsible for her. Another example, um, a, a woman that works. You know, we have so many households in Islam that the woman works and the husband works. The husband and wife both works. Her money by Islamic law is all hers. If she wishes, she can give her some. Or she can support in the household and spend over the children. He can't take her money. He cannot take her, That's her but money. But his money, she has rights in his money. She can put her hand in his wallet pocket and take money if it's justified. He has to spend over her and her children. If she wishes to give him from her income, fine. If not, he has no right to touch one penny. Amazing. It's starting to clear up many of the Absolutely. misconceptions and fog. And tell us now, why is it with all this hype and misinformation, more women, is it true, are coming to Islam here in America, in UK, all around the world, in Europe, than men? It's the world's fastest growing religion, Islam. I have been given a class uh, for uh, over five, six years now for new converts to Islam. 90% of the newcomers and people who accept Islam are females. So if it's that subjugating and that unfair and that intolerant of the wrong position, would somebody explain to me that mystery? That's a... Unless it's totally the opposite of the truth. Totally the opposite. And as you see, they go to the severe exception and mutilate it and make it the general rule. For example, I, you know, every time I speak to someone, oh, women in Saudi Arabia are not allowed to drive. So let's say the law in Saudi Arabia is very protective of women and does not want them to be exposed to be alone with a man that they're not responsible for. There's 57 countries. Why you focus on that one country for the one specific thing and leave the other 56 countries where women are driving not a day? Uh, they go to rural areas in Afghanistan and Pakistan and they're very hit with poverty. Afghanistan is the third poorest country in the world and go in rural areas where people are illiterate, do not have you know the, the, the education or the, the knowledge of Islam and only picture these people as if these victims of poverty uh, are you know the whole uh, uh, Islam and the whole 1.6 billion mm -hmm. population. SubhanAllah. Amazing, amazing. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Have you ever wondered what Islam and Muslims are truly about? What do Muslims believe? Who was Muhammad? Do Muslims believe that Jesus will return? Is Islam respectful of other beliefs? What does the Quran say about women? Would you like to learn the truth about Islam? Would you like to read the Quran for yourself? Find the answers for yourself. Call toll-free 877-YHY-ISLAM or visit whyislam.org. Back here on The Dean Show with Imam Mustafa Zaid, we're talking about women in Islam and clearly now, people are getting the opposite of what they've been told. Yes. Islam doesn't oppress the woman. Islam uplifts the woman. And I think, tell me what you think, that women are getting sick of being used and abused. You want to sell a candy bar, a Coca-Cola, uh, Pepsi, you got to put this naked woman on there, and they're not being respected. And I think the smart women, they're seeing this. So they see that Islam is uplifting me, it's protecting me. It's not letting me be harmed. And actually, I answer that. One of the claims that Robert Spencer puts in his book that we were feared by the lies about Muhammad is that he says women, Muslim women are treated like commodities in Muslim world. And I have to answer, excuse me, there's a multi-billion dollar industry called the pornography industry in America. Who do you think is the victim of that multi-billion industry? 
it's the woman who would look at the AIDS uh, 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 infections, women and men alike, and look at the ratios in Muslim countries. Statistically, it's almost non-existent in Muslim countries. Look at the divorce rates in Muslim countries, and some of them are the poorest countries in the world where divorce is more possible to happen than, and you cannot even compare. And what I even, you know, and I want to tell our Muslim sisters who need to answer to this, who said that the Muslim women are complaining? Did you ask the Muslim women, the women that were in the video, did you ask them, well, did someone hold a gun to your head and ask you to put this over your head in the morning? Or you were in it on your own love and obedience to God and the way he uplifted you and he respected you and your body that it's not something, a showcase for, for some materialistic thing. Did you ask Muslim women? No. Ask the Muslim women. This is important. Yes. Those women need to yeah. go talk to the women and ask them. Tell us also before we come to an end, but they put someone on TV and she tells her story. She, she was born in a Muslim household and now she wrote a book and she's, you know, been given the microphone and she says that, you know, Islam was doing this and that to me. It was oppressing me and I had to run away and this is Islam. What do you got to say? And the answer to that is where Islam is the law. The law of Islam is Quran and Sunnah. Please, with your superior knowledge, show me the ayah and the Quran, the verse in the Quran, or the correct hadith of the Prophet that proves what he's saying, that it's not your dad committing a crime against you, but it's actually the law itself in Quran and Sunnah. And you're going to be wrong. And most of these people, and I would willing to put that challenge out there, that they do not even know how to recite one ayah of the Quran, or one correct hadith of Prophet Muhammad And that's why they are more interviewed than someone like me. Now you're available if CNN Fox News wants you to come on are you willing to come a on any time and, and any topic of any Islam and do not even give me five minutes for preparation. I'll go as is. Now how can people get a hold of you if they needed to? Uh, my email is theliesaboutmuhammad at gmail.com. Uh, you can go to the website of theliesaboutmuhammad.com and uh, my information also in the book itself. So much to talk about. You have your own section at thedeanshow.com. We've covered many topics there. So I really mm -hmm. recommend people can get the book, The Lies About Muhammad who is the last and final messenger sent to mankind, closing comments and advice for the sincere person out there who, you know what, he's like or she's like, you know, Islam is making sense. What do you got to say to them? Well, Islam is making sense is probably the most common thread of all the brothers and sisters that accepted Islam. They all come to me and some of them are mostly highly educated. Everything about Islam makes sense. Why? Because it's the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bringing you the best in life and the best guidance and because he created you he created the manual by which you live your life and of course everything would make sense inshallah thank you very much Jazakallah khair. we are Jazakallah thank you khair. and again again i just have to thank you thank you so much for coming to learn about islam from us from the muslims thank you so much and i'm sure you got the benefit and you got to learn that islam does not oppress the woman it uplifts the woman she's sick of being used and abused for her body islam makes that woman someone who you respect for her mind someone who you respect not use and abuse those most precious thing to us we protect those things but the Muslim woman is more valuable than any car any commodity any diamond any of these things there are mothers our sisters these are the most precious things to us and you've gotten to learn how much and how important the Muslim woman and her role in Islam oh it's amazing. It's amazing. And don't forget to interact. If you're a woman and you really like what Islam has to say, go and talk to the woman. The woman that you've seen wearing the hijab, ask her, is she oppressed or is she liberated? Ask her how she feels. Don't ask Fox News or CNN. Come to the Dean Show also so you can learn more. And we'll see you next time. Until then, peace be unto you.